Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. This is part two of my uh, benchmarking process, which, as I said in part one, the, the, this, these pair of videos are primarily for me because there are certain plants I want to monitor their growth through the winter. So by filming them now at the beginning of December, I can check them again at the end of February and compare and actually see what sort of growth on those chosen plants I've got through the winter. They've all been chosen for a reason for me. But, like I said, everybody's welcome to watch. And that's a nice one to start with. <laughs> Not interested in its progress in the winter, but I'm very interested in the result of the progress in the summer on this one, because that's the best blooming I've ever had. There's still more buds to come, too. That's an excellent blooming on that plant. That's... Um, Catlia cernua was sophronitis once. Quite honestly, it's um, a lot of the sophronitis have intense oranges and reds, and they were used in the hybridization program uh, programs in the past to get that colour into Catlias hybrids, and also reduce the size because a lot of them are miniatures. You know, you introduce some deep oranges and reds and miniature quality into hybrids. It has an effect, and the effect is quite obvious in some of the hybrids that have been uh, passed down from these plants. Um, anyway, nice one to start with, but not part of the uh, benchmarking process. Now, this is my Encyclia prismata carpa, never bloomed, and um, the plant was nearly lost, so I'm pleased that it's grown to new growths. I do have a bit of bug damage because, well, the reason I nearly lost it was scale. And obviously as the new growths come out, they get bitten and damage occurs. And you never get over it. You know, those leaves are stuck there forever more now. But why I want to benchmark this one is the two new growths seem to me to have almost stopped growing. So by filming it now, I can have another look. Um, this isn't a warm grower, so, you know, it should be okay through the winter and carry on growing. It's pushed out a lot of new roots with those two new growths. But um, you can see on previous growths that um, the leaves are quite tight. You know, they don't open wide like some do, but then these two did. Yeah, but these two growths have pushed up to, I would say, virtually full size, maybe a little bit undersized but their leaves are holding together they're not spreading out they're not opening out down through the middle there's no sign of any sheaths or anything in there yet i don't expect that to bloom um, what i'm hoping is that those two growths mature and push out another pair of new growths preferably more because um the only ones i've ever seen of this in bloom are big plants <laughs> I've never seen any in bloom with just a few bulbs on. So I may be a hell of a long way off blooming on that one. I just want to see what those two new growths do. Are these leaves going to open out? And um, if and when do I get some more new growths? So we'll see how that one progresses. Now I'm filming this one while it's still alive. And I, I say that, yeah, because... Um, this is a Prosthetia Green Hornet, and it's going downhill, and I don't know why. Um, latest new growth here, um, quite weak, quite small, um, and a lot of yellowing on leaves. Um, it has produced new roots, and there are still some new roots growing, but it's not doing well. It just isn't. And I don't know why everything else that went in the holy clay pots took off like a rocket. And this one hasn't. <laughs> Basically, it just hasn't done like the others have done. And I don't know what's going wrong with it at the moment. It has got some roots. Um, anyway, that's what it looks like now. <laughs> when I come to film these end of February or whatever, this one might be missing. It really is not doing well. I have no ideas with this one. It gets treated like all the others in the holy clay pots. Um, but it's struggling. Um, 
being a hybrid, I could go and look up its parents and see what their care is. Then it, it, it'll I'd be mainly be interested in the temperature range of the of the parents if I can find out. Um, I mean, it could be that it's a cool grower by nature, and we've had a lot of heat this summer, and that could have just knocked it. Yeah. It might be that it's a really warm grower and it's objecting to the cooler temperatures it's getting now. But whatever's, you know, whatever's going on, it's not a happy plant. Still, I sort of run along the lines of there's 200 old plants in here and I've got about half a dozen that aren't doing very well. I'll live with that. I don't want to lose that plant. I love the blooms, but um, it hasn't been doing well for some time. And now it's definitely not doing very well. We'll see if that's still there in three months' time. Now I'm benching this this thing for more than one reason. Because this is like a project plant. Um, four or five people got one of these, same sort of size, at the same time. And the idea is that every so often, you know, we, re we all refilm our plants to see how well or not they're doing. Now for me... I left this one in its original pot and it got quite a lot of mould in that pot so I had to repot it. Um, being a vandacious type, I've uh, decided that it's in large chunky bark with plenty of air around it. But um, I don't know how vigorous a grower this is supposed to be but at the moment it's doing very little. But obviously its um, previous leaf here was bigger than anything before and it's now growing a new leaf so that that's the leaf to watch to see what that does and I would like at some point probably next year to see some branching on the roots or some new root growth one or the other it's got reasonable roots I'm not you know I'm not worried about the roots it's got you know it's got one beauty right down into the pot there and other shorter ones it's got roots um, so we'll see how that one does but uh, yeah Dimorphorcus lauii. Come on, brain. Yeah. Dimorphorcus lauii. And it's one of a set of a few that various people have got. And was effectively a present from um, the channel Orchid du BCN, my good friend John Greco in uh, Barcelona. And uh, several other people have got one. I think Danny's got one, Rachel's got one, John got one for himself. And somebody else who I can never remember, totally out of that sort of set of four, also got one at the same time and asked to join in. Well, I've got no problem with people joining in with anything, you know, <laughs> especially where orchids are concerned. But there is that core set of four. We're all supposed to be... Uh, you know, noting our progress, if any. <laughs> so that's that one. Right, I want this one benchmarked for, well, actually many reasons. <laughs> um, this is a third of what was a giant plant in a basket about... Oh, uh, where's it gone? <laughs> I've lost a plant. In a basket about that big. <laughs> and it was totally root-bound and it was failing badly. It was going downhill at a rate of knots. So um, I dragged it out of its basket and I literally had to cut the root system. It was so tightly packed it had sort of eaten its media. So it just wasn't hydrating itself. It was failing. But um, this is a third of the plant now potted with signs of new roots growing and new growths. I'm currently in bloom which I'm very surprised about. These are gorgeous blooms if unusual. Um, but what I'm after on this one is number of new growths whoops, and their state knocking the place about now um, because I want to see what it does. So we've got a new growth here um, with a new leaf just coming out. Um, most of the bulbs on this are either single leaf or pairs of leaves. They seem to vary. Um, most of them have two quite honestly. So um, it's got one very small leaf on that growth and another one to come. So that's a, a new growth there. There's another new growth there about at the same sort of stage and another new growth round the back. That one's just pushing out. And signs of new roots coming out round the base of the plant. What's going on in the pot 
will be difficult to see. There are, there are there's signs of root growth, but effectively this is quite a large plant with a very, very poor root system. That's how it ended up. So I'll be interested to see what that does. But I don't think I'm going to get a major response out of this plant until next year, until we get into the growing season again. But that's as it is now. This one at first I thought had a virus because of the state of some of the leaves. You know, that, that is not natural. <laughs> um, so what I'm watching for is what state are the new leaves in as they mature. Yeah, I mean some of the leaves aren't too bad, they're unmarked. This is on the original plant, not new growths. Um, but at the moment I've got no new growths that have completely matured to see how they're going to look. So uh, that, that's why I want that one on film, for various reasons. Did I say what it was? It's a Maxillaria arachnitiflora. That's easy for you to say. And the main reason I'm monitoring this one is because it was an infected plant, which I hope it's sorted itself out now, because the latest new growth is good, and it's pushed out some good roots, nice green green... Uh, <laughs> Nice green root tips, more coffee nurse. Um, but what I want to monitor is the two latest new growths at the base of the uh, current matured pseudo bulb. I want to see how they progress through the winter and to see if they get up to full size. Uh, you know, it, it'll be a, a process which will help me determine that it really has recovered, is those latest two growths. Um, anyway, that's a, a Miltonia, and it's Castanei, um, which, which with a name like that is probably a species. <laughs> but it's got two new growths on top of the one it's already produced. So progress, but I still want to see what those latest growths do. Now I want to get this one on film. Firstly, this is its first winter. This is a Jenkinsai, Jenkinsii. Jenkins CI, one of the two, oh, I've forgotten, um, with aggregatum, so it's a cross. Um, luckily, with this one, to give this its winter rest, it's behaved really nicely because it's pushed out quite a few bare roots around the outside of the plant, which means I can give this a little bit of hydration without getting the moss wet. So I can keep the base of the plant dry, which is what I want to do in the winter time. But why I want one of these, um, the Jenkins CI species is a similar growth pattern, albeit a little bit smaller. But um, that's what I want to film, is that large new growth hanging down the bottom. And why I want that on film is that that is at its full size. And I want to see how much this plant desiccates and if it produces blooms as a consequence of, of the winter rest it's getting this year. Yeah? So um, <clears throat> I'm watering my mounts every second and in the main every third day now and the resting dendrobiums get missed on a run. So they're getting watered every five or six days and they get a trickle just enough to try and get at some of those bare roots and that's it. That's what it's getting. No feed it's got the cooler temperatures, it's got the bright light. Um, but what I want to see is that it's a, it's a combination. If at the end of the year it blooms, then obviously the winter rest was sufficient. It did its job. If it doesn't, I'll think again. But what I want to do is the comparison. If it blooms, how much does that latest new growth desiccate during the winter? Yeah, And if it doesn't desiccate too badly and it blooms, then obviously it had enough hydration. So I'll know for next year. Um, if, however, it doesn't desiccate at all and it doesn't bloom, then it may have had too much water. So it's a game. Every winter is, is a bit of a game with these resting types. And this is its first winter, this one. So I wanted to uh, effectively use that lower new growth as the telltale sign as to how much hydration I can get away with or how little rather I can get away with to induce those blooms. Now if it desiccates and it still doesn't bloom I don't know what I'm going to do <laughs> but it's a wait and see 
Quite honestly, with the um, late winter, early spring bloomer resting type dendrobiums, bearing in mind we always talk about blooms, while the spikes have got to develop, get their buds and actually open. So in theory, we should be seeing signs of spikes probably towards the end of January. You know, so we'll keep our eye on that one. But that's the bulb to watch, that lower one because that's its latest big new growth. I want to see what that looks like coming out at the end of the winter. So that's that one. I want to capture this one as well because this is a non-bloomer um, and I believe there is no reason now why it isn't blooming size. Um, it's got its, effectively, it's, um, there's three years worth of canes on here. These are the oldest canes here which they're doing autumn, so there shouldn't be any leaves left on there soon, those few at the top. Then these down here are last year's canes. Now they have desiccated a bit during their rest last year and they never plumped up again. Um, they also didn't bloom. Um, but they're still holding their leaves and probably will into next year now. The latest canes are these shiny ones with the big plump bits. Yeah, so those are the ones I need to watch. All the canes have stopped growing now. It is in its rest as of, you know, a couple of weeks ago. So no feed. And I'm lucky. This one had a lot of moss put around it because it wasn't hydrating. Well, that's all been taken off now, all bar a couple of little bits. So it's got a lot of bare roots on the mount. So as you can see, I can just give a few of those bare roots just enough, like I've done now, to turn them slightly green leaving some of them not touched. So that's the smallish amount of water it's getting, and that's about every five or six days. But this is, this is what I'm watching, is to see if these start to desiccate. And again, if they don't desiccate much and it still doesn't bloom, I will assume it had too much water. So I can knock it down yet again. But it's a, it's a game each year. Um, to see how it does but I'll be very interested to see blooms on that for the first time and there are potentially three canes that could bloom I might only get one bloom on one of them but that's better than none which is all I've had so far so we'll see how that one progresses but these are the bits to watch and if they get like this that's okay yeah um, but if they still don't bloom then in my assumption it's still getting too much water. So we'll have to reduce it even more next time. Whoops, forgot to say, that's Dendrobium findlayanum. Um, very unusual canes on that one, very distinctive. I don't think I've seen any other Dendrobiums with that shape on the canes. I love it. <laughs> I will grow this for the plant alone. It's just interesting, even if it doesn't bloom. But it would be better if it did. Right, I want to include one Tolumnia, um, and I've chosen one that's um, recovering from in being quite a bad way to pushing up a new growth with a new root system. So um, that's its state of play now. And that can represent effectively all the Tolumnias, because some of them are nowhere near that well recovered, and some have recovered better than that. But it'd be interesting to see how they grow with the short days and the lower temperatures, if at all. So we can uh, monitor that new growth and see what happens with it and how those roots progress through the winter months, just to see how a Tolumnia grows in the UK winter. So that, that's all that one's getting benchmarked for. It's recovering, I've got no problems that it'll recover and it will eventually bloom. And that's um, Jarak Flyer Black Magic so that we can find it again <laughs> in the spring. <laughs> but yeah, it's recovering quite nicely, so we'll watch the progress of that in the winter months. Obviously it's going to be a lot slower than it would be in the growing season, but we'll see how it goes. No sign of any other new growths apart from that nice strong one pushing up at the front of the plant. So we'll see how that one progresses. Right, I've got to include this one. Because although this is a resting type dendrobium, it's not going to get rested this year. It's, um, I only got this in June this year, so it's relatively recently mounted. But it should rest, and um, 
It'll be interesting to see what happens with this. If this blooms, I'll shoot myself in the foot because it's not going to get a rest. This is getting watered at the same frequency as all the other non-resting mounts and it gets a bit of feed, which it shouldn't get. That's Dendrobium senile, or senile as I like to call it because of the grey hairs like me. Um, but you can see it's pushing out roots. It's in active growth. And I want to keep that going this year. So for this winter, no rest for you. And we'll see. That's a good view of the plant to pick up again. Yeah, because there's quite a few new growths there. The, the lowest one in the shot now is a new growth. Um, well, basically anything that's got green canes is a new growth. The older grayer colored ones are the older growths. So we can see where they are, how big they are. And I'm going to keep that going through the winter. So first of all, we'll see how much it grows in the winter. And if it blooms, as I said, I'll, well, I'll eat my hat. Good job I haven't got a hat. <laughs> Just got a feeling this is going to do something silly. <laughs> It'll be marvellous if that blooms, but I don't expect it to. But I'm going to keep it growing anyway. So uh, its first true winter rest will be next year. So it's got a long wait before it gets uh, starved. Anyway, we'll see how that one progresses. I'm pleased with the plant's progress through its growing season, and I'm going to try and keep it growing through the winter. Sometimes orchids just are full of surprises. Um, this was my wonderful Rasavola nodosa that bloomed spectacularly earlier this year. I actually got a first at one of the orchid societies. I was over the moon. Four spikes. Um, I then promptly dropped it and broke off its latest two leads with the new growths that were starting. Um, you can see the, the stump there, which is now pushing out some roots. And the other stump there at the bottom of the shot, that's where the new growths broke off. Um, well, they have since branched out, and we've got new root growth coming from those, um, those areas, but it's still only pushed out two new growths this year. Um, that one there, that might be a spike. Um, that was like a new growth towards the end of last year, so that one sort of matured through the winter and earlier this year. I didn't expect that to bloom, but that one is. Now I never expected to see blooms on this for a while because of its shock from the damage that caused by losing both of its new leads basically. But that definitely looks like a spike. Now whether that can mature or not depends. I see no reason why not. It's got a root system that works. There are some older dead roots on there that could possibly get trimmed off at some point just to tidy the look of it. But it's produced a lot of new growth, uh, new roots this year, those lovely white ones at the back of the mount. And it's now producing quite a few brand new ones. Now, you know, those have got to grow on through the winter now. But I'm pretty sure that is going to bloom. Now, it might be a weak spike. It might only have one bloom. Um, as I said, some of the spikes... <laughs> last time I had four um, and that one may bloom so that's done a funny thing anyway because it's pushed up two leaves on that growth so we'll have to wait and see but um, yeah I'm surprised that that's spiking it'll be a slow progress but I'll mark that in my notes as being in bud with a question mark we'll see how we go and the date that the spike started obviously then we can see how long it takes to get to the first blooms opening, if they ever do. But it's recovering, but the damage was severe. You know, I just literally dropped it flat on its face. And it was from a height, because it was as I was trying to hang it up. So it fell from the roof to the floor. <laughs> um, but it's recovering, and um, I'm surprised to see new roots growing out of that stump. But uh, any new roots are good roots, <laughs> no matter where they come out from. And we'll see how that one does. I was not expecting that to bloom until the next set of new growths, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, that's the end of the uh, two benchmarking videos at the start of winter. Um, plants chosen for reasons, you know, for me basically, which is what these two are primarily for. Um, if you've watched them, I hope you've enjoyed them. And um, Probably, if you have, then you'll be very interested in the videos that come at the end of February, 
where I go back and revisit those plants to see how well they progressed. Um, again, <laughs> those are videos for me, but um, you know, you're always welcome to join in. As I say, most, most of my videos are done for viewers, um, but some of them are done for me as well, because I need to see progress on plants so that I can adjust care if I think it's necessary. And the only reason I would do that is because things are not doing as well as I believe they should do. If they're doing as well as they can, well, what more can you do? <laughs> That's all we can ever do, isn't it? Is do the best we can. Okay, see you next time. Bye for now.